So we're here to honor a very special individual today, but let's take a step back. Korea, 1950 to 1953. The Korean War is called the Forgotten War, which is unfortunate as our servicemen served so valiantly. They fought in the worst of conditions to protect a people they never met. Edgar's presence here in Petaluma has helped bring visibility to many Korean War veterans who came home with little recognition. The Petaluma Museum is hosting an exhibit honoring those who served, and Edgar has been a beacon of light, reminding us the senselessness of war, and we thank him for his efforts towards world peace. Edgar Mitchell was one of the few soldiers at the time who had a doctorate. Apollo exceeded our greatest expectations and gave hope to a generation. Exploring the moon was humankind's most incredible accomplishment. Apollo 14, January 31st to February 9th, 1971. Astronauts Alan Shepard, Commander Ed Mitchell, Lunar Module Pilot, Stuart Rusa, Command Module Pilot. The fourth man moonshot is most famous at the mission where the astronaut played golf. But there were other adventures the crew encountered along the way. My favorite is the establishment of the first Lunar Olympics with Ed's makeshift javelin. It was a very successful mission. And traveling 24,000 miles an hour, Ed, the human meteorite, returned home with 95 pounds of the moon. Apollo 14 splashed down on Earth February 9th. And after the ruckus Apollo 13 caused, Apollo 14 helped the program regain its confidence. So with great pride today, we honor Edgar Mitchell. He gave the world hope and inspiration. And with that, I'd like to introduce our mayor, David Glass. Thank you. It is indeed an honor to be here today. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy the most about being mayor is the opportunity to have a chance to meet people that have made a difference in this world. And certainly today we have Dr. Mitchell with us and what a difference he and his cohorts at NASA have made and the folks that he served with in the Korean War. It is an honor to read City of Petaluma's proclamation to Dr. Edgar Mitchell for Edgar Mitchell Day, October 27th. 2012 and it reads, whereas Dr. Edgar Mitchell joined the Navy in 1952 where he trained as a pilot and launched and landed single planes from the aircraft carriers USS Bon Ham Richard and USS Ticonderoga. He served his country honorably in the Korean War receiving the Navy Distinguished Service Medal. And whereas on January 31st, 1971, Navy Captain Dr. Edgar Mitchell embarked on a journey into outer space as Lunar Module Pilot on Apollo 14 with fellow astronauts Alan Shepard, Stuart Rusa, and spent nine hours working on the lunar surface in the Fra Mauro Highlands region as the sixth person to walk on the moon. And whereas through the efforts of NASA's Apollo space program, President John F. Kennedy's national goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth was met. And whereas Dr. Edgar Mitchell was presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1970 by President Richard Nixon, as well as receiving the NASA Distinguished Service Medal for his heroic efforts. And whereas in 1973, Dr. Mitchell continued his journey of an exploration of the mind and founded the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which is now based here in Petaluma. And whereas ION's mission is supporting individual and collective transformation through consciousness research, educational outreach, and engaging a global learning community in the realization of our human potential. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, David Glass, Mayor of Petaluma, along with all of the members of the Petaluma City Council, do hereby proclaim today, Saturday, October 27, 2012, as Dr. Edgar Mitchell Day in the city of Petaluma. Dr. Mitchell? Thank you, one and all. Thank you. I indeed feel honored to be among you today to receive this proclamation and this award. I'm just one person doing what they think best. My motto has been for many years, serve the greater God, and that's what I strive to do every day. I feel privileged to have 
had the path that I've had. A lot of it was happenstance. I really wasn't planning to go into the Korean War, <laughs> except I was about to be drafted. And uh, I preferred to choose my branch of service, and I chose the Navy, and I chose flight because I had been flying since I was 13 years old and already had a pilot's license. So it seemed the right thing to do, and it worked out fine. <laughs> however, however, the Korean War ended while I was in the Pacific, but I was already been designated to come back to test pilot school and to become a test pilot, which I did. And about that time is when Sputnik went up. And I said, well, that sounds like a nice thing to do, a good thing to do. Maybe I ought to try that one also. <laughs> and that worked out that uh, I was selected in the astronaut program in 1966 after a successful career as a test pilot and getting a PhD from MIT in aeronautics and astronautics. And <clears throat> so my course was somewhat set at that point in time. And I feel privileged to have represented the humans of Earth, but in particular the United States on the Apollo 14 mission to the moon. And I realized at that point that a new path of discovery and exploration and career had been established for we humans. And that was to begin to exploring the heavens and to go eventually beyond our solar system into deeper space. And we will at some point, we must do that. Since as we have learned, and many of us already know, <clears throat> our solar system won't last forever. And if it's a species, we're going to survive. We have to eventually go somewhere else. Now, that's a long ways in the future, I trust. But nevertheless, that is a path of exploration. And each generation, each century, we have to reevaluate where we are, where we're headed, what we can do to learn to live together as a civilization of humans on this little planet we call Earth. And we have reached that point of looking, going into space, looking back at this little Earth and seeing how utterly magnificent it is, how beautiful it is in the larger picture of the heavens around us. And that was what the privilege I had was to have that experience and also my colleagues on the Apollo missions, although they didn't necessarily have exactly the same experience I had, they all had some experience of seeing Earth from space, and we all agreed on how magnificent it was, and if our political systems and our leadership at the political lever, levels could ever see Earth from that point of view, we'd have quite a different leadership on Earth. What that really was is the utter magnificence of seeing Earth as a little planet in the larger picture of the heavens. And I do call the epiphany I had in space regarding this the big picture effect of seeing ourselves, our planet, our situation on Earth, our life on Earth as in a totally different way. I remind you that our ancestors, just a few hundred and a, even back a couple of thousand years ago, believed Earth was the center of the universe. And in this century, we have dispelled ourselves of that notion and see how much more powerful, magnificent it is, this universe that we live in. And suddenly we have a new mission to make life on this Earth bearable, usable, productive, and safe place to be for all humans. And our growth and explosion of our population during the 20th and into the 21st centuries causes us to be concerned about the sustainability of where we are. And we just had talks about this at our Noetics board meeting this week 
again on the issue of sustainability of our civilization. And I point out to you that when we understand this issue, it's not too hard to develop the idea of let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be love and kindness on earth and service to the greater good and let it begin with me because only if we do that will it become true. Thank you very much for this honor, for the privilege of being with you, for your presence here, and I hope you will join all of us in that mission to make this a better place to live, to make this civilization that we're in, we're in a global civilization of people loving and kind and serving the greater good. Thank you very much for your attention.